Welcome to the second in our series about the KISS flight controller. Now here it is actually plugged into the board. So what I've done in between the last two videos, it looks complicated but it's really not. All I've done is I've actually soldered the ESCs onto the places on the board. And then what I've done is I've connected the bottom of the flight controller using that single cable and then installed the little standoffs that you get with the kit and plugged it all together. The only other thing that I have done, uh, which didn't come as part of the kit, is I have printed um, and designed a little 3D part. Now this is going to go onto a carbon fiber frame that I'm going to show you in a second and we're going to build that carbon fiber frame and put it all together and then we'll install the software and configure this and have it flying by the end of this video but because there are a couple of contacts here that shouldn't touch the carbon fiber I've made this little shield and this just pops onto here and what it does it provides a little bit of separation between the bottom of the board and all the electronics, but still provides lots of airflow. If you're interested in printing one of these, you can get it from our Thingiverse site. So that is the flight controller, and as you can see, once it's all together, it looks pretty fantastic. What you've got to remember is the arrow that's in the middle of the board is pointing towards the front of the craft. There's ESC1, ESC2, etc. So putting this onto a craft is going to be a piece of cake. I do like the way this thing looks. It's very purposeful. We've looked at a couple of other setups where the ESCs and everything has all been integrated. Uh, this is a slightly different way where it's laid out differently. Now because this board is so long, it's 100mm by 45mm, it won't fit in a lot of normal frames. So I've had to do some searching around to find a frame that would work. And I think I finally got one. The frame we're going to use is actually this thing here. It's a Speedix 250 frame. And it's slightly different from all the other ones that we've used on the channel so far in that all the supports are handled in the actual corners. So let me show you how this thing fits. So this one I actually ordered from eBay from a seller in the Far East. It's arrived the last couple of days. So finally we can crack on with the series. So this flight controller board is this is the bottom plate is going to fit there as you can see we're going to just put a couple of uh, bolts on the screws as they pop through so there's the flight controller as you can see it is a very nice fit and then the arms um, and the way these arms work on this model is the motor goes on the top and then you have these big fluorescent feet that go over the end bit and then you have little carbon fiber covers that go over here. So what it means is that we can mount the motors and the motors we'll use just so you can keep track of what we're up to. We're actually using some of the new DYS motors. These are 2205 2300 kV special edition race motors. So we're going to use these guys and the way it works is we have to put the wires through the little holes in the arms there we go, a little fiddly but it's in. And the motor will fit on the top of the arm like that. And then the actual cables can run all the way through the inside of the arm and pop out at the end and then that will allow us to wire it all up to the KISS flight controller. And the way it works is these arms when they're on here is just perfect size to fit everything on and these arms can fit a six inch prop so we're going to have more than enough power for a craft of this size there is also a little mount that goes at the front for a camera so that can go on there and even with the other bits and pieces on here there's enough room for us to mount the camera behind it so that's what we're going to do so let me stop the video and what I'm going to do before we plug this in and do everything else I'm going to do all the wiring and set the frame up because the configuration is really simple what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the three wires from each of the motors to these connections not worrying about whether it's going the right way or not because on each speed controller there you can just about make it out it's called jumper one it's those two little pads there that is actually a solderable connection if you bridge those two with solder then it will reverse the direction of the motor 
Really, really smart idea. Means that there's not a lot messing about. I don't have to unsolve anything. So I can just put this frame together and then plug it into the computer and start to configure everything. So let me stop the video, put this frame together, and then when we come back, we'll be ready to plug it in, download the software, plug the flight controller into it, and start to configure everything. Occasionally you do a build and it is just fun to put together and this has been one of those. So let me just show you what I've done. Just take the top off. Um, this is just the top of the frame with the anti-vibration mount. I've also mounted our X4R underneath. Uh, 3D printed a couple of little mounts for some aerial supports. So that's going to be the top. The bit I really want to show you is how fantastic the main bits look. So the only things I've done here, I have fitted the arms on, put the motors on the arms, and the really nice thing with this frame is that everything is covered. So the motors from the arms come in here, had to solder some little extensions, um, extension wires, and then solder each of the wires as they come out and go into the speed controllers. Isn't that neat? So now that's all together. The only other things that I've done is connected a power cable. So the two big pads that were on the bottom are now connected to an XT60 connector. So we're ready for plugging a battery in. There is also, hopefully the camera's kind of picking it up, um, a cable tie around that. That's better. So um, we have put a cable tie through the board holes that's a nice little addition as well and we've also wired the three pins for our receiver connector onto the first three pads here in the end i decided not to use pins just because it's going together so neatly there's one last connection that we need to make before we can set this little guy up. Now on the power distribution board, the way it works is the power comes in from these two leads that we soldered here onto the positive and ground wires. And then you can actually see there's a little box here that says V-Reg for the voltage regulator. Now it doesn't have one on by default. And these, this little six wire cable that connects up into the flight controller only sends the ground, it has a connection for the plus five volts, and then it has the connections for each of the four speed controllers as well. Now, as we've already talked about, the flight controller itself does have a voltage regulator on it. That's what that big black box there at the top is. So we do need to actually power stuff. Now, this is a little bit disappointing because I thought that with this being so beautifully designed, all these connections would be made for you. So the way it works here is, speaking to the developers, it's designed like this because you don't know what size of battery that you can use. Because If you remember from our first video, there's a very wide range of LiPo sizes and voltages you can use. So there are a number of options if you wanted to install a voltage regulator in this ESC cradle and once it's in there then it will provide the 5 volts for the whole system. If you don't want to do it that way then what you can do is you can actually then power the whole system without buying anything else just by connecting these voltage in pins which are at the bottom here of the main flight controller. If you connect those up then the 5 volts comes out of this little black box on the back, travels down the 6-pin cable and powers the entire system. So I'm going to connect, using the bottom of the board, I'm going to connect two little pins on here and then jump it off the power distribution board. I'm probably going to go right from the main contacts actually. And then once it's all together, not only will all the signals and everything be done by this cable, but the board is powered too. I know that seems a little bit complicated and I struggled with this for probably the best part of an hour with a voltmeter trying to figure out um, how it was all supposed to work and it ended up talking to the developers at Flyduino who were great and kind of explained it all to me. So you've got two options in summary. One, put a voltage regulator and there are lots of different options available from the Flyduino site onto the power distribution board ESC cradle thing and that will work or you can do what we're doing here and you can just jumper off the power from the bottom plate 
plug it into the voltage in on the flight controller and then that will power everything as well. So let me do this and then we'll put it all back together and then we'll be ready to plug into the PC to do the configuration, test the motors are all working, configure the whole thing and then we'll be ready to fly. So, so let me stop the video here, just make that quick cable up and we'll come back and have a look. So a quick five minutes of soldering later, this should all work. So what I've done on the underside of the little board is I've actually installed two little pins. I don't know if you can see those there. Uh, two little right angle pins coming out the bottom of the board. They're soldered into that V-in connector on the top. That should give me a way then to connect the power into the main board. And then here, on the power distribution board, I've just installed um, a little uh, servo style connector with two pins and just soldered that into the power and negative. And now to connect the power up, it's just a case of slipping those two pins into the connector, making sure the polarity is okay. Once that's in, then the main board will sit on top like that and then just plug that in and we have power and everything. So let me finish putting this together. So now we have all the signals, power, and everything ready to rock and roll. When we plug it into the machine, we should be able to fire everything up. And then also when we unplug it from the USB cable, it'll work fine as well. This definitely isn't a project for those of you that are worried about soldering. There is quite a bit of soldering to be done, but hopefully you can appreciate that it's a very neat solution once you've got it there. So finally, we can go onto the netbook, install the software in Chrome Store and connect it up. And it's going to be a quick and easy job. Just configure everything. The only thing we are going to have to check is make sure each of the motors is turning in the right direction. If it, one of them isn't, then we can just solder that little jumper and it'll work fine. So netbook time. Just a quick reminder how you get hold of the KISS software. What you need to do is go onto the Chrome Web Store and then as you search for KISS, then when you hit enter, you'll find a couple of apps. This is the one you want. You want KISS FC. You need to install that onto your computer. Now, we have already got that running here. So here it is ready to go and we I haven't got the machine plugged in yet, but the nice thing is about this is once you plug the USB cable in, it'll not only power the flight controller, it'll also power the receiver too. So we'll be able to check the radio. Now I've set the radio up already and we can test it when we configure it all. We haven't got the battery connected and we haven't got props attached because we need to make sure that everything's configured, that we can arm the board, that the motors all start and then that the motors are running in the right direction. And as we just said, if they're not running in the right direction, a quick little blob of solder on one of those points will reverse the direction for us. So let's plug it in. Now, once we're connected, then it immediately takes us onto the configuration tab. And here's all the important information. This is where we can set the type of frame that we have. So we have tricopter, quad, and all these others. Make a note of which way the motors are actually turning. Uh, in the actual frame itself, it's very hard to wire these up the wrong way round because of the way the ESC is laid out. This power distribution board with the ESCs in mean that the motors are in the right position. But this one has to go clockwise, this one has to go clockwise too, and the other two, two and four, have to go on anti-clockwise. We'll need to check that. We need to tell it what receiver type we've got. We've got lots of different PPM types. With PPM, you can actually select the order of the channels, the main flight control channels that you want. We obviously have FR Sky S bus, and we'll have a look at that in a second. So I've set my Tyrannus up. We haven't changed anything of these general settings. We're leaving everything as absolutely standard. The only thing I have done is say when my auxiliary one channel or the fifth channel coming in is set uh, high, then it's auto level mode. When auxiliary two set high, sound the buzzer. Now we'll install the buzzer in a later video in the series. Now if I just send this into a smaller window, that's pretty much it. You can just see we kind of have a save settings here at the bottom right hand corner. 
Now in the, the data output tab, this is where we can see what's going on. At the moment, we can see that uh, the battery voltage from the ESC, and we know, can also see the inputs from our radio. So if I move my throttle, there's the throttle moving up and down. So I know that's on the right channel. Then uh, aileron, roll, I know that's on the right channel. Pitch is on the right channel and then your is as well. So everything should kind of follow. So as your throttle goes up, the value should increase. As your rudder or your control goes to the left, the value should fall. It goes to the right, the value should increase. And the elevator and aileron, the aileron as you go left should fall or roll should fall. And then as it goes to the right, it should increase. And the elevator is the last one, whereas it goes to the top of the radio, the value increases, goes to the bottom of the radio, it decreases. So that is all perfect. Make sure that you use your sub trims in the radio so that everything settles as close to 1500 as you possibly can. The other two things I've done, I've just assigned a couple of extra little switches on the radio. So auxiliary one is set to be my control for the, um, the mode that it's flying in. You see at the moment here it says acro, as I go over here it goes to level mode so I'll need to set that up on the radio so that it's announcing properly. And the other one then is auxiliary 2 which is the one that's going to sound the alarm or the buzzer when we do that in the next video. Now everything looks pretty good. It's saying that we're pretty much level. Uh, worthwhile calibrating your accelerometer if you haven't done it yet, because so, that should be level. If I move the craft nose up and down, then there you are. You can see all the bits and pieces moving. There's no artificial horizon on this because it's very difficult to get wrong. And so long as you've got the front of the board pointing towards the front of the craft, we should be good. The last thing we'll do then is let's just check we can arm the board. Now to arm the board, what you do is you hold the throttle RSI stick over to the right hand side for the rudder. Now the radio's upset because I've got the um, antennas really close to each other then. So what we're gonna watch on the main screen is this disarm status. I'm going to arm the board by holding that stick in that position, low throttle your right or rudder right. Brilliant, it's same to armed. I'm going to increase the power. Now the main flight battery voltage isn't plugged in, but we can see all of the motors changing channels. I'll disarm it by holding it at the lowest throttle position over to the left hand side. That looks really promising. So I'm happy with all of that. That looks good. Last test then before we finish up is we're going to plug in the flight battery voltage. There's all the ESCs coming on. They all now have a green light. We're gonna arm the board again, and this time, I'm just gonna watch which way all the motors are going, make sure they're turning the right way, and also to make sure they start at the same time. So, first fire up, always a fun time. Let's arm the board, and let's power up. They are all moving in the right direction. Fantastic. Okay, so the last thing then is for us to install the props on here. Let's disconnect on the application, close that down. What we'll do is put the props on and then it's time to go into the back garden for our first test hover. So we're in the back garden to do our usual bit of flying. It's a nice calm day. The all up weight of this model is around about 562 grams. It's a 2200 milliamp hour pack, about 30 C, and we're using five by 4.5 inch bullnose props. And as you can see, it is absolutely super stable. Probably the most stable craft like this that I've ever flown straight out the box without any PID tuning or messing around at all. Now this of course is using the Speedix frame. I'll put a link in the description so you can find that if you're interested in buying this. Don't forget though there are a couple of things you need to be aware of when you're building this. First of all is that there is an additional cable and power connection that you're going to have to make from the cradle that holds the ESCs up into the flight controller itself. You're going to be, need to be comfortable with soldering in order to make this. 
but when you finish you have a really beautiful looking craft that is a super neat installation and you'll see when I land in a second how locked in the PIDs are this thing just drops to the ground there's no bouncing around or anything so stay tuned for other videos in the series we're going to add a buzzer we're going to do things like set up telemetry add an on-screen display for FPV bits but those will be coming in the next month or two so subscribe stay tuned and there's more to come Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.